right now, I'm working on this project where I am helping to create a meal for 2,000 people at a table one half mile long. This is Tom with Community Connections, and we're here with Saint Tour, and uh, a project that he's been working on, and he's given us the opportunity to kind of follow the event. And I'm going to allow him to kind of explain the beginnings of his idea. And he's quite an artist, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I should kind of frame this to say that I am a visual artist. Yes. I do large-scale public artworks, yes. uh, works that you have to see to experience. And so I've created over 30 pieces on the streetscapes in Minneapolis and St. Paul over a number of years. I've been making art for well over 40 years. Okay. And we're right now in City Food Studio in South Minneapolis. Yes. And so I was born in North Minneapolis and grew up in South Minneapolis. So this is my old homeland. So it's kind of nice to be back here in my old homeland. Okay, and in this process, what is a, a, a streetscape? A streetscape is uh, a landscape. Okay. Uh, I mean, we, we don't know and understand the term streetscape. Okay. And, I mean, we know and understand the term landscape. We've heard it for so, often, for so long and so often. But I use the term streetscape because what I've been doing is making an impact on urban landscapes. And so okay. I call those streetscapes. Uh, I mean, that's more of an urban term that applies to what we see out here. Okay. And you have different plate locations that they are... Oh, uh, yeah. Say? I mean, you could see uh, most recently my work uh, was a part of the new light rail line that connects downtown Minneapolis to St. Paul. Okay. So I've integrated artwork into three of the stations on the new green line on the Rice Street Station, Dale Street Station, and Lexington Parkway Station. And uh, then I've got work on uh, the Nicollet Mall, a piece I collaborated with a good friend, uh, Takumba Aiken, and also a poet, Sayini Gaiden. Um, this work on Nicollet Mall, I've got work in, throughout Heritage Park in North Minneapolis, uh, work in a couple of libraries, um, so and so, and, 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 uh, and honesty, uh, and I've been so fortunate and, and so blessed uh, to be able to make an impact in, here in my hometown mm -hmm. on the streetscapes here, but also I'm so fortunate and blessed to be able to earn a living from my artwork. Yes. Uh, that's a, also a real big blessing. And to the point where it allows me to do many other things. Yeah. And so art really kind of subsidizes some of my other interests. And one of those interests is food. Yes. And so what I want to really talk a lot about is not so much the streetscape, but the tablescape. Yes. <laughs> and I'm dying to hear about that. Yeah, so right now I'm working on this project where I am helping to create a meal for 2,000 people okay. at a table one half mile long. Uh, I, and this really is a way that we can demonstrate healthy eating and healthy uh, cooking to the neighborhood I live in. I live in Frogtown in St. Paul. Okay. And so we're going to close off Victoria Street on September 14, 2014. So this is, this is now being uh, recorded before that event. And so after that event, you will have to come back and talk again, or maybe even invite you to the event so you can see part of it and use some, some of that footage in here. I appreciate that invitation. I'll take yeah. you up on that. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you. And I, I, as you... Uh, setting a table now, I have a very large family of uh, probably 20 people. <laughs> yeah. So setting a table for 2,000 uh, must take a little bit of work. Oh, it's, yeah, I can't even describe to you the details of 
creating something like this. I mean, it, it's so overwhelming. And there's no way possible that I could do this by myself. No way. Uh, you know, and for a while I thought that we could do it on small little kitchens, on mobile kitchens. and thought we could maybe do it in food carts, but that was just so far out of the realm yeah. of reality. And uh, fortunately, we've got a great chef that's working with us on this that really helped kind of visualize this. But we've also been working with this big, long, big, huge team. Okay. Uh, and so the big, the producing organization is, is Public Arts St. Paul. Okay. Uh, decades old organization in St. Paul that's been dedicated to, um, to supporting the work of artists. And okay. over time, you know, that work has changed. And so there are more and more artists like myself that have a big community engagement component to their work. Yes. So they're doing a lot of work with community, for community. And as I said, this piece is right in my neighborhood. Now, it came from two different ideas and initiatives, two different experiences. One was my wife and I lived in an uh, old storefront in Frogtown. So we live upstairs, and my studio space is downstairs. So when I pull up my blinds in my studio window and look out on the street, the streetscape, I would see my neighbors passing by in one direction, coming back in another direction with bags of groceries just a few minutes later, sure. knowing that they had just come from doing their grocery shopping at the local convenience store. Okay. And then looking a little bit closer at those bags, you could even see that a lot of that food in those bags was packaged food or prepared food not fresh or whole foods at all. And so that prompted me to, wanna, to want to do something in my own neighborhoods with my neighbors uh, and, and to work together to have a more healthy community. And, and by that, what, what we'd have to do is to really have healthy bodies. And so that was one thing. The other thing is I'm a member of a small group of African-American environmentalists called AfroEco. And working with a few other nonprofits, we applied for and received a grant from the USDA, U.S. Department of Agriculture, to do a food assessment, asking people in our neighborhood, what are the obstacles that prevent you from making healthy food choices? And one of the first things that came up was of course cost. cost you know, yeah, people think about one. yeah, people think about cost. But one of the things I maintain is that the cost of those cheap calories, that those packaged foods that agribusiness has been selling to us for a long time, for the last hundred years almost, uh, I maintain that those cheap calories will cost you more in the long run than ca than calories that are just a little bit more expensive. And those are those fresh and whole foods. So, but right after that, and this food assessment, going back to that, right after cost, or not so much right after cost, there were other things too, like transportation that affected Certainly. food costs. Just even access to local food in your neighborhood, in your line of sight even. But one of the responses that kind of surprised me is that people were intimidated with making healthy food choices and probing a little bit deeper the reason that people are intimidated with making those healthy food choices is they've forgotten how to cook they don't know how to prepare healthy food or whole foods and so creating this meal was an opportunity to impact that with my neighbors to give people a real clear demonstration of what a healthy meal was okay. and, and even to link people up with the farmers that grew that food. Okay. And really, more importantly, to begin a dinnertime conversation about food 
across community lines, across the neighborhood, across culture, across language, uh, to really begin this, this discussion about how we can be more involved in the food system. And so we're going to prompt uh, many tables to have that discussion along that entire half mile long route. I, I uh, look forward to having a seat at your table. Well, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>